Today we're going to do a crazy finishing experiment by adding aniline dye to Danish oil. Stick around, see what kind of results we get on Cortison White Oak. Well, you're probably familiar with aniline dyes in a water base, and that has a couple of inherent problems. First and foremost, it'll raise the grain. So you know that nice project you just finished sanding? Well, wipe some water on it and sand it all over again. That's sort of a problem that I'm looking to avoid. Even with water-based aniline dye, you will have lap marks and witness marks. It's kind of a continual problem that you have to fight. It's a little bit better when it's water-based versus solvent-based, although if you are doing a solvent-based aniline dye, there are ways to get around that. For instance, if you're using a transtint dye and you do a 50-50 mix of denatured alcohol and lacquer thinner, and then you use 5% by volume of lacquer retarder, that will slow the drying down enough that you can get a pretty decent wipe-on product for aniline dyes. For larger projects though, you will need two people and it's still something in the back of your mind. You're always kind of worried about those lap marks and witness marks. Now, believe it or don't, this is actually following the directions on a specific product to mix this in with Danish oil. First, let's just clarify, if you're using a transtint dye, it is stated on the material data sheet that you shouldn't mix that sort of dye with any kind of an oil product. Don't mix transtint with an oil-based stain, tongue oil, Danish oil, anything like that. But we've actually found a product that recommends it. Of course, you have to order the type of dye that is, quote, oil soluble. So if you get the right dye, this is a JE Moser's and it's a dark fumed finish. So what we're going to do is mix about half of this packet, that'll be about a half an ounce, into one pint of Danish oil. Anytime you're around powdered aniline dyes, make sure to use a respirator. Okay, so I've got my half ounce of powdered dye divided out and we'll mix that with one pint of Danish oil for a ratio of one ounce per quart. I'm going to keep stirring that intermittently for about an hour. And while we wait, I'll show you some of the issues I've had with more traditional water-based and solvent-based dyes. Well, there isn't much that scares me in the world of finishing anymore, except when it comes to wiping on aniline-based dyes by hand. We'll crack open a couple different cans, one that's water-based and one that's solvent-based, and show you just how they apply when you try to wipe these on. This is transtint golden brown dye mixed in water. The ratio is one ounce of dye per quart of water. Now, this isn't the darkest dye, and you know, people who are fans of dye say that, well, if you use it with water base, you won't get lap marks. And then they proceed to show you on a little sample like this how it can work so well. Well, the first problem is, boom, I've already raised the grain. So I know in the back of my mind, I've created a whole bunch more work for myself. Usually the process is raising the grain first with plain water, letting it dry thoroughly, usually overnight, coming back and sanding it with a fine grit paper just to soften up all that raised grain. The other problem and probably the bigger issue for me is I'm never just doing these little picture frames and cutting boards. I'm always doing larger projects like a bookcase or a Morris chair. So this line where I start is here and then I move on and unless I have a helper with me it can be eight or ten minutes before I come around to that spot again and so what I want to do is just simulate that as if this were a larger project and we'll just give that a moment or two and see if we can wipe out our witness marks so it's been only about 60 seconds here and I'll come back with a very wet rag and just see if I can soften that out a little bit We'll wipe off the excess and see how even the color is. Not too bad on that. So if I got to it within a minute, there's not too much of a lap mark and I'd be happy with that. I would say that often on large scale projects, there's at least one lap mark that I'm not happy with. The saving grace here is that it's a multi-step process. This will get a shellac next, followed by a glaze gel stain, and then top coat. So even if there are some lap marks, it's not the end of the world, but I still would really like to improve the dye application process. 
Of course, the darker the dye, the more of an issue that becomes. This is a trans tint dark mission brown dye mixed in a solvent solution. Now the specific solvent here is a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and lacquer thinner plus 5% by volume of lacquer retarder and this is mixed at a ratio of one and a half ounce of dye per quart of thinner. So with the dark dye you have more chance of developing lap marks. Again if you're doing a little picture frame I'm sure you could finish it in time but without a second pair of hands, this could be very difficult to apply without major lap marks. Problem is that dark mission brown is so gorgeous, I do like to use it, but here I'm coming over with just kind of a semi-wet rag, and I do see a heavy lap line in there. Let's see if a wet rag will help to blend that distinct lap mark that we had. And it looks like if I'm inside of a one minute or 90 second window it blends fairly well I mean that color is just gorgeous brings out the ray flex in that white oak you can see why people use it and I definitely do like to use that transient dye but I'm always worried about in the back of my mind a heavy lap mark developing that I won't be able to fix before it dries and if your solution is to add a second coat of dye, do be aware that that can result in a final color that's twice as dark as the original. So our Danish oil-based dye has mixed intermittently for about an hour. That's what the direction said to do, but honestly, when I put the dye in the Danish oil, it seemed to dissolve instantly. If yours doesn't, make sure that you ordered and were shipped the right product. Remember, it has to be the oil-based dye to work in Danish oil. So this mixture is a little orange looking compared to the other dark trans tint dye. Um, again, this is supposed to be a dark fumed finish and my one concern with mixing it with Danish oil is that it wouldn't let it produce a dark enough color. We'll have to see what it looks like when we add the shellac seal coat and then the gel stain that I use as a glaze. The one positive I notice here is it goes on just like any Danish oil that you would expect. There's absolutely no lap marks. If you come over an area a little bit later, it blends in just seamlessly. So that is something I was going for. There may be a possibility of getting a darker aniline dye powder to mix in with Danish oil. Uh, but this one did sound like it was advertising a pretty dark color, so we'll assume this is one of the darker colors that you can get with the initial step using dye. These staining sponges, by the way, are excellent for applying dye, no matter what sort of base you've mixed your dye into. They're just terry cloth wrapped sponges, and they prevent drips, and they're just a wonderful way to apply any kind of aniline dye. Okay, and here's the finished color after that dye has had a chance to dry. And just feeling this surface, now I did sand this to 150 before applying that dye, but it definitely feels like Danish oil. I mean, it feels like it has a light finish on it, like a light seal coat. My normal process would be to seal in the dye with a shellac seal coat. I'm gonna do that on half of this sample board and I'll skip that step on the other half We'll see what difference that makes, if any, when we go to apply the gel stain. So we'll just add the shellac to this side of the board. Now another thing I notice is brushing out this shellac over the oil soluble dye, it doesn't seem to lift up the color at all. Whereas if this was a solvent based dye, I would never be able to brush on that shellac. That's a step I always have to spray. So that might be another interesting advantage of the oil based dye. And then we'll add that General Finishes Antique Walnut Gel Stain to see how that works over the side that's been sealed with shellac versus the side that has not. So this is the side of the board that's been sealed with shellac. This side has not. And this will be more of a true test as to the final color we're going for than anything else. That's the product that we're going to add and it's one that I typically will use as my final glaze coat before the top coat goes on. And I was just interested to see how this product would work over a sealed side versus the unsealed surface. I'll let this gel stain sit for a few minutes to simulate working on a larger project like a Morris chair, and then we'll wipe that back. 
It helps if you use a fairly dirty rag when you're wiping back the gel stain. By that I just mean one that's not absolutely white and clean. But use a part of the rag that's already got some gel stain on it and just use that to wipe back the finish. So the difference is very subtle. This was the side that had the shellac sealer before the gel stain. On this side, it was just the dye and then the gel stain, no sealer coat. And very subtle differences, but what I notice is on the side that was sealed with shellac, the Rayflex come through a little bit better and it's just got a slightly more amber color to it, which is pleasant. Nothing wrong with the other side. It just doesn't show the figure through quite as well. Although I didn't have any trouble with the finish getting darker than I wanted, which can be a real problem if you go over water-based dyes or solvent-based dyes. So interesting difference here using the dye that was diluted in Danish oil. But still, I think I'll stick with the routine of doing a shellac seal coat between the dye and the gel stain. All right, guys, there's my results. Mixing dye into Danish oil as opposed to the more traditional approaches of water or solvent. And overall, I think the approach looks very favorable. It's something I wanna try a little bit more of in the shop. One thing you may look at is, can you get the finish dark enough with this approach? It does seem when you mix an aniline dye with Danish oil, that the color is not gonna be quite as dark as the other methods, so something to consider with that. But one thing I like about Danish oil in general is just how easy it is to work. And that seemed to remain true when I added dye to the Danish oil. I wasn't fighting the clock at all, and I didn't have any trouble whatsoever with lap marks or witness marks. And of course, that was the main problem I was trying to solve. So definitely something to look into. Do some experimenting, see if this approach isn't right for you and your next projects. Hey, remember to give me a thumbs up if you like this topic. Subscribe to the Thoughtful Woodworker channel. I thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.